The digital scroll compressor is a form of scroll compressor commonly used in commercial air conditioners. It's more complex than the fixed speed scroll compressor, which we covered in our previous video. If you haven't seen our previous video, make sure you check it out. It also covers the basic operating principle of scroll compressors, which will be handy if you don't already understand it. In this video, we will cover the digital scroll compressor and its pros and cons. In the next video of this series, we will cover the inverter scroll compressor for comparison. The aim of these videos is to help HVAC engineers make more informed decisions when choosing air conditioning equipment for their projects. Like the fixed speed scroll compressor, the digital scroll compressor uses a fixed speed electric motor. But what makes it different is an unloading mechanism, which allows for a form of capacity control. This unloading mechanism is activated by a solenoid valve, and what it does is slightly separate the scroll set on the vertical axis. When the compressor is in the unloaded state, the electric motor still runs and the orbiting scroll still orbits, but there is no refrigerant compression occurring. This means that none of the mechanical work gets translated into useful heating or cooling for the indoor space during this time. By using this unloading mechanism and a control methodology called pulse width modulation, the output of a refrigeration system can be modulated to meet changes in heating and cooling demand. For example, when a digital scroll compressor is required to run at 100% cooling capacity, the scroll set will be continuously engaged to provide full capacity. But when the cooling load reduces to 50%, the compressor will toggle between the loaded and unloaded states over complete cycles of typically 20 seconds. So for 10 seconds the compressor will provide full capacity, and then in the following 10 seconds it will provide no capacity. This cycle repeats and results in an average output that is equal to 50%. If the cooling load lowers further to 10%, then the compressor will operate in the loaded state for 2 seconds and the unloaded state for 18 seconds per cycle. This results in an average capacity output of 10%. So now that we understand the operating principle of the digital scroll compressor, let's go over where it is good and not so good. Starting with the good, digital scroll compressors have better capacity control than fixed speed scroll compressors. Even though their capacity modulation is not perfectly smooth and variations in supply or temperature are theoretically possible, in practice digital scroll compressors should be good enough for precise temperature and humidity control application. Controlling the output of a digital scroll compressor is done via a variable analog signal. This means that digital scroll compressors can be driven by control algorithms that are more complex than a hysteresis thermostat and can closely match a particular heating or cooling load. PID loops and fuzzy logic are two common types of control algorithms used for variable capacity control. Keep in mind, the adequacy and tuning of these algorithms is just as important as the mechanical side of the capacity modulation when it comes to precise temperature and humidity control. Now, on to the not so good side of digital scroll compressors, energy efficiency. To demonstrate why they are not so good in this area, consider the 10% capacity loading sequence again. Here the compressor is in the loaded state for two seconds per cycle where it draws the full amount of electrical power. During the 18 seconds per cycle where the compressor is unloaded, the motor still runs and draws electrical power even though there is no refrigerant compression occurring and no useful heating or cooling produced. Granted there is a reduced mechanical load during the unloaded intervals, but electrical power consumption is still significant. So this means for this scenario, we have reduced the capacity by 90%, but the motor is always running and only returns a bit of a power saving during the unloaded intervals. In comparison, the fixed speed scroll compressor draws no electrical power during its off cycles because the motor is simply switched off. Basically, any reduction in energy the digital scroll sees during part load scenarios is not proportional to its reduction in capacity output. And this means that efficiency is being compromised. Plotting the EER or COP of the digital scroll compressor against capacity produces a curve that looks like this. The efficiency is at its max at full capacity and tapers off as the capacity is reduced. The efficiency of the digital scroll compressor falls by about a third at 10% output. To support this, two academic studies which tested and plotted the efficiency of the digital scroll compressor are linked in our description below. And considering that variable capacity air conditioners typically spend minimal time operating at full capacity, the seasonal energy efficiency of a unit with digital scroll compressors will likely be low. In other words, it will spend most of its operational time at sub-optimal efficiency and will draw more electrical energy throughout a season as a result. 
This is significant as the world is putting increasing emphasis on energy efficiency. And Australia's Greenhouse and Energy Minimum Standards 2019 now requires that part load efficiencies are considered in the efficiency ratings of air conditioners. So in summary, the digital scroll compressor uses some pretty clever mechanical engineering to allow for more precise indoor climate control. But it isn't the best option in terms of energy efficiency. If it wasn't for the inverter scroll compressor, the digital scroll compressor may have been the right choice for your next HVAC project. Look out for our next video, which will explain why air conditioners with inverter scroll compressors are the clear standout option. And don't forget to check out our website at airchange.com.au.